Kia ora, folks. Let's talk about linear functions and transformations. So first of all, the standard form for a straight line looks something like this. So we have y equals mx plus c, and there are specific characteristics of this form, and that's why we have it like this. So the m here represents slope, and we saw this in the last session. And it is always right beside the x. And of course, this is the variable of interest. The c down the back end, including the plus sign, when written like this, this represents the y-intercept. So this is where the function crosses that y-axis. Uh, and then we have y, right? This is my function definition over here. So y equals f at x on the left-hand side. And so this is also my other, my other variable. And this is called standard form. Sometimes you may have seen it as plus b down the end, just depending on where you learned it from. So let's have a look at two examples here. So y equals 3x Just sketch out a quick axis here. So y equals 3x. The 3 straight away in front here tells me the slope, and that means the rise over run is plus 3. So it rises 3, 1, 2, 3, every time it goes over by one point. So this is 1, this is 3. And then we go again up 3, so that would be to 6, and we go over 1, and this would be to 2. So this is kind of a shortcut to graphing this line. So now I've got a point here and a point here. I have another point if I come over one in reverse and then down three, I have another point here. These three points connect to give me a straight line like so. And it has a positive slope and this is going up and to the right. Now, we had no plus c in this example, just 3x or 3x plus 0, and that means that the intercept is right on the axis, and it went through 0, 0. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So, minus a half x, minus 4. Okay, x and y. So, my slope here take the sign with it, is everything in front of the x. So slope is negative a half, and that's going to be some sort of down to the right sloping line. So all negative slopes go down into the right. And then my intercept is minus 4. So let's plot the intercept first. So I'll go minus 1, 2, 3, 4. as my intercept, and then the slope is negative a half. So that is the same as 1 over 2. So the rise is negative 1, so we come down 1, and then the run is 2, and we go over 2. So 1, 2, down 1, over 2, 3, 4, down 1, over 2. And you only need three line, three points to make a line. So I should be able to connect these in a line. So I should be able to connect these in a line like this. Now these are just sketches. Uh, I could be better. But as long as I have one point anchored on the graph, which is my intercept, and then I know the slope value, that's all you need. That's all the information you need for a straight line. Alternatively, you just need two points for a straight line. So I'll just make a note about this and we'll come back to this at different points. 
Um, so this is the intercept slope form. There's another form called the point slope form. And this says y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And you'll recognize the slope there as m, and then your point is x1 comma y1. So given any point, you can use that information to determine the equation of the line. But we'll come back to this in the future. That is an aside. Okay, let's look at two special cases. So first of all, if we're looking at these equations, what is the slope? That's the question. So what is the slope? We might be thinking back to y equals mx plus c, and you think, well, m is the slope, and you think, well, where is the x? Right, so this first one has no x value. So what's going on there? And in actually, you could say it does have an x value, but it's just zero. So we could say something like this, y equals zero times x plus four. And then we've sort of manually created our slope value here. Slope is zero. And if we think about graphing this, uh, slope of zero means that you don't have any rise, so you're stuck there, and then the run is whatever the other value is. So when we're graphing this, y equals four, this is just a straight line. There's plus four, and the slope the whole way through is zero. So at any point on the line, you can't go up or down, that's the rise. And then we have that's rise over run, and you can run however long you want. So we have zero up or down divided by a run. And we know mathematically then we could say, that's just the x-axis, we could say m equals rise over run. If you can't go up, that's zero over some number on the bottom don't know what it is, but it doesn't matter, because zero divided by anything equals zero. So that's how we get mathematically to that zero slope. Now if horizontal line is one special case, vertical line uh, should be my other special case. So let's look at this, and now this one looks kind of funny, but let's try to rearrange to standard form. So I have y equals something x minus seven. Well, there's something x in here, the slope that you cannot see equals one times x. However, on the left-hand side here, zero times y, well, zero times anything is zero. So this is zero equals x minus seven. and then move this seven over and we get seven equals x. And so just like the previous example of y equals four, seven equals x, well let's just graph it. Find x equals seven, there it is. Of course I just made that up, right? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now this is a vertical line at x equals seven. And now let's look at the slope here. So I'm gonna erase this because the slope actually isn't one. That was just a trick of my equation. So if I do my same calculation, m equals rise over run, we see here that my rise, I can go up as far as I want, but I can't go to the side at all. 
So any two points I can go up as far as I want. Let's pick a number, let's go up another seven. But then I can't go to the side, I'm stuck. So this equation, for my example, I pick seven, and then the run is zero. So this is what we call over zero or divide by zero. And you can try it on your calculator just to convince yourself that you cannot divide seven by zero. So I'm gonna write this in red. So this is what we call undefined. Can't do it, or this is a math error. Not possible. It's a real line. You can tell that the function is there. It's a vertical line. It's got a real equation. x equals 7. But the slope doesn't have a numerical value. So the slope is undefined. The next topic is uh, transformations. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to take a function and we're going to shift it around the graph and see how that looks from our equations perspective. So a vertical shift, I have a little legend up here. A vertical shift says f of x plus c. So we have some function to do with x. And then down the back end, we add or subtract some value c. Now these functions aren't all linear functions. We'll pick up quadratics in the next session, but that's okay. There's no reason why we can't see them right now. My first equation here says y equals x squared minus 2. So the minus 2 down the back end says I'm going to shift down by two units. Shift down 2. The plus 3 for this example says I'm going to shift up by three units. Okay, so let's see if we can sketch these. So just real quick, y equals x squared is a parabola that goes through the origin 0, 0. And then by the time we shift it down, you take every point and you bring it down, two units, down, two units, down two. And then your new parabola has the turning point or the bowl here at 0 minus 2. So that's my downshift. y equals square root of x plus 3. So I know what the square root of x looks like straight away. So I'll do two graphs here. So this will be my square root of x starts at 0. You can sub in 0 here and say 0 equals 0. And then you just take the square root of every number and you get kind of this sideways parabola here. So that's a root x function. Now if I shift the whole thing up 3, I'm taking my 0, 0, and I'm moving it to plus 3. And then the rest of the function looks the same. So everywhere along here has been shifted from the original up three units. Three x cubed plus one. Now a cubic function has alternating arms and looks like this. And now if you shift it up one, just pick a new point here and say that this is now 0, 1. The new parabola, sorry, the new cubic function goes like this, having been shifted up at every point. We'll look at this more on a graphing application in a moment. OK, one more. y equals minus 4 plus absolute x. So this means absolute values. 
and that means that you're not allowed any negatives. So if I had y equals x, for example, every value of x has the same value of y. So 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, minus 3 comma minus 3 are the same. If you take those negative values, which I'm going to highlight right here, you take these negative values and make them positive, then we get something that looks like this. So on this side, this is now y equals absolute value of x. So you're just reflecting those values in the x-axis up top or mirror, mirroring them. Uh, and then if we're going to subtract 4 from the whole thing, remember this is not attached to any x value. So the x values are in here, f at x plus c is down the end. So even though it's in a different spot, this minus 4 is down the end, absolute x. So we're going to take this mirrored function and shift it down by 4 units. One, two, three, four, and then looks like this. And I could rewrite it like this if I want, absolute x minus four, four. Okay, so that's a shift up and down. Next up, we have a horizontal shift, so left and right. Okay, so we see here a difference. Now we have brackets. So for a horizontal shift, that shift has to be packaged up with the x value by brackets. So for the first one here, we have this package, x minus two, and then you square it. For the second one here, we have x plus three, put it end on my square root sign, and then I square root it. So the top bar of the root sign here acts like brackets and wraps up what's in the x. So we can see here that all of these have a shift wrapped right next to the x value. Uh, these two also have these last two also have a vertical shift, which is that number that's not attached to the x value. So let's try to graph this first one here. So y equals x squared is my standard parabola. y equals x minus 2 squared. Now let's do some, some test values. If x equals 0, I sub in x equals 0, then I get minus 2 and I square it. So 0, 4 will be my point. If x equals 1, then I get 1 minus 2 is minus 1 and minus 1 squared is 2. So 1 comma 2 is here. So I'm just doing a quick table of values here. If x equals 2, then 2 minus 2 is 0, and I get 0. And I can continue on, and I get a pattern like this. Now I know that my standard parabola goes through 0, 0. So this function has now actually been shifted to the right. and we had a negative sign. So this is like right with negative. This negative. So in the x-axis, it's opposite. So 
if you have negative two shift, it actually goes to the right. So this is opposite because these are positive numbers. If you have a positive three shift, this function will actually go then to the left. If I have a positive one shift, this function will go to the left. A minus four shift will go to the right. So for horizontal shifts, first thing to note is brackets, and now the next note is that it's opposite to the sine. So root x plus 3 root x looks like this and then if you're shifting it by plus three units it's not plus three to the right it's now opposite so it's plus three to the left so this point now is minus three and then everything comes to the left by three units So this new point for the root function is all you, the information you need to know along with the shape because it's a root function. Okay, so we have a cubic and now we have two shifts, right? So let's just write out the shifts, but I'm not gonna sketch this one. So the plus one is attached, bundled to the X value with those brackets. So that's a horizontal shift and the plus is opposite. So that's actually to the left by one. And then down the back end here, this one here is a vertical shift and it's going to be down by one. So for my last example, X minus four, again, bundled in the brackets the exponent four here would apply to everything inside the brackets. And there would be four of them. I wouldn't want to do that expansion. So this negative shift is actually to the right by four units. And then we have a plus one here. So this one is going to be up by one unit for a horizontal transformation. Scaling transformations, now I have a, and then it's right beside f at x. So this is multiplying the whole function. So this is multiply by the function. Could maybe have a dot in between there to mean times. And this is gonna scale the whole function. So if we had a uh, a function f at x and then a equals two, now it's twice. So the whole thing, depending on the shape, is going to be scaled up by two times. Or if it's a half, it's going to be scaled uh, down by two times or scaled up by a half, the inverse there. So two x squared here, the two is my scale. The two is my scale. There's no shifts because there's no up or down. And so this actually still looks like a regular parabola. And without more numbers on there, you can't tell that it's been scaled. We'll look at this in a minute when I plot it using Desmos. So again, the scale of three times the root X, you can't tell that this has been shifted until I get some better numbers on here. Um, You could do a you could do a quick a quick test point if you had x equals nine square root of nine is three so this point would have been nine comma three uh, 
Uh, and now it's going to be 3 times 3, so it's going to be somewhere up here, so we can see what the new shift, what that new scalar factor has done to it. So you can have fractions, this is the same as 0 0.5 times x cubed, and that is going to have the effect that it's going to look like it's compressing it or shrinking it down. Whereas if A is bigger than 1, it's going to look like it's stretching it or pulling it up. Uh, and this also, so we have absolute x cubed, and you could say that it's divided by 4. So again, it's a cubic, and it's going to look like it's being squashed or compressed. Alright, so reflections is the last transformation. We've got horizontal shifts, vertical shifts, scales, and reflections. And these now are just, all we have here is a negative sign. So the negative sign when you're done, it's going to take all, all your numbers and it's going to multiply it by negative 1. So anything that's like plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, now becomes negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And since um, in these cases here, so if I look at my parabola, y equals x squared, and I calculate all my values and maybe I put in x equals 2 and I get 2 squared is 4. Now instead of positive 4, I have to plot negative 4. So positive 4 was up here, but now I have to plot negative 4. And you do that with all of them. So you would have one that's positive 2, you would have one that's positive 1, and then 0. And these now all get flipped or mirrored in that x-axis, and that's what the reflection does. Looking at this second one here, I've got an x minus 2, and then I've got a negative sign here as my reflection. So if you think about it without the negative sign, y equals x minus 2, that's a linear function, y equals x and it's been brought down by two units. Now if you reflect it, you take everything and you mirror it on that x-axis. So the new one will look something like this. So I'll leave these two as exercises. Sketch the following. I've got a couple examples here. And let's use an app to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Desmos. I will be using this a lot. Throughout this course. So desmos.com slash calculator. And we get a standard page here with the Cartesian coordinate system. So let's look at y equals minus x plus 2. So you can just type straight in here. y equals minus x plus 2. And there we have our line. We can see it's got a negative 1 slope beside the x here. Same as negative 1. That doesn't change anything. And the intercept is 2 units up. So that's the first one. y equals negative x plus 2. The next one, y equals 1 half x minus 1. Well, let's just sketch it right on top. Press enter and you get a new input line. 
So y equals one half, there's my fraction, and then type x, and then my intercept was minus one. So there it is, the slope of this blue one now is one half, so every time you go up one, you go over two. And it's a positive sloping line, and the y-intercept is minus one. So there are those two plotted using Desmos. Okay, I've got two more here. Let's have a look at these. Now before I get to Desmos, let's try to imagine what they look like. So x plus one plus three. X plus one is in brackets. And then we have plus three, but you can actually just remove these brackets, x plus one plus three, and simplify this to x plus four. So this one here is a straight line, y equals x, so 45 degree angle and then it's shifted up four units. Over here, let's come back to this one. Let's just plot this one, x plus one plus three, and I'll type it in just as I've done it there. x plus one, and you can type brackets, and then plus three. So the green one now, you can click here and turn these lines off. So the green one now indeed looks the same as y equals x plus 4. Let's just double check. x plus 4. And so now the purple one is right on top of the green one. Okay, for this example, let's, you could type this into Desmos, but let's just do some pre-processing. Our standard form says y equals mx plus b. If we have standard form, you straight away know the slope and the intercept and you can picture it. So in order to figure this out, let's divide both sides by two. These twos will cancel and I get y equals four over two is two and then keep the absolute values, two times absolute x. So without the absolute values, this is a positive two slope. So we go up two over one, up two over one. So something like this, even though I missed those points there. And then with the absolute values, you want to take all of the negative area and make it positive. So this is all the negative area. So this part here, you have to reflect up and make positive. And it will come out with the same slope, goes through zero, zero. But let's plot it just to see. So 2y equals 4 times absolute x. Okay, let's turn these off. Okay, 2y equals 4, so you can plot that. And then absolute x, well there's my x. To get the absolute, you want to type the vertical bar above the enter. And there we have it. So. It's got a slope of positive two on this side, and on this side it's got a slope of negative two. And that of course is the same as y equals two times absolute x. So the red and the black are the same line. to exercise for us here, y equals 0.2x, and then instead of showing the equation, we have some words. So for these ones, you need to sketch the new graph and give the new equation, and you can get on Desmos and check those answers.